Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining me in my home studio. The Trump administration has abruptly pulled funding for U.S. research into bats and coronaviruses. The nonprofit Eco Health Alliance worked in China to trap bats and collect bodily fluid samples. The aim was to try and identify new coronaviruses. Their funding was yanked over the group's ties to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. President Trump has claimed the coronavirus leaked from a lab at the Wuhan Institute. China has denied these allegations, and U.S. authorities have found no evidence this is the case. For more on this, Professor Robert Gary is a microbiologist at Tulane University, and he joins me via Skype from New Orleans. Welcome, Professor Gary. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, you work on COVID-19 research. How important was this research to understanding the current pandemic? Well, this is very important work for the long term. I mean, not so much for this pandemic. I mean, this virus, which was wholly or mostly from a bat, coronavirus, is spreading in your neighborhood. And it's spreading in my neighborhood, too, and in neighborhoods all over the planet. And we need to stop it. And. As I'm sure you're aware, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Sunday there is, quote, enormous evidence that the coronavirus escaped from a lab in Wuhan. What do you say to that? Well, my teammates and I looked at the genetics of SARS-CoV-2 and determined that it is definitely not a manufactured bioweapon. I mean, there is a strong consensus uh, about that fact in the U.S. government. Uh, WHO just got around to releasing a statement that said that SARS-CoV-2 was not purposely assembled. We also looked at the possibility that SARS-CoV-2 escaped from a lab. And it's impossible to eliminate that as a possibility. I mean, scientists do trap bats and other animals. However, in the grand scheme of things, uh, scientists represent really a minuscule number of, you know, human bat exposures. And it's much more likely that a person trapping bats for food or traditional medicine somewhere, uh, simply being in the same environment as a bat, uh, was infected with some progenitor of SARS-CoV-2. So bottom line is extremely unlikely, boarding on impossible that SARS-CoV-2 was in a laboratory anywhere, including in Wuhan, and accidentally escaped. So right now it seems that the scientific consensus, or at least within the scientific community, is that this virus went from a bat either straight to a human or through another animal host. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. That's, that's, that's. So uh, does yeah. this lack of funding, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. I mean, we don't know how long it was in, uh, you know, the bats or some other animal before it jumped into a person. Um, could have been, you know, years, could have been even longer. We don't really know. Um, you know, how long this process of evolving took place. So let's go back then to this, you know, current lack of funding now. Does this mean that we could potentially miss something important in the future related to new outbreaks? I mean, it seems that with the U.S. government accusing this Wuhan lab of, you know, either faulty safety practices or, or whatnot, that there's a great risk that the international scientific community could become segregated and not share information with each other. And does that then put global health at an even greater risk? Absolutely. Uh, we, we know from the work um, that was just uh, terminated uh, and other work around the world that there is a great diversity of coronaviruses in bats and other animals. Now, we've only sampled a small part of that diversity. Uh, many of these bat and other animal coronaviruses can potentially spread to humans. Uh, and, you know, with some, you know, probably minor adaptations, uh, these viruses would pose a, a threat to start another pandemic. There was a SARS-1 um, several years back. There's now a SARS-2. Uh, I can predict, you know, with some confidence that there will be a SARS-3 and a SARS-4. Uh, we need to do more research on that and other animal coronaviruses, not less. And, and does it appear that this is where the greatest danger lies? I mean, I, the Eco Health Alliance said that since 2015, they've identified more than 400 new coronaviruses in bats in China alone. That's not even the research being done in other parts of the world. So what does that fact tell us? 
uh, it tells us that there's a, you know, a great number of these coronaviruses out there. Each one of them, uh, you know, or at least many of them have the potential to make a small change, a small adaptation that would allow uh, that virus to spread in people. And, you know, we can see the consequences of that now with this, you know, really massive pandemic that we're having now. And so, Professor Gary, is it unusual for this kind of funding to be suddenly pulled after it was renewed only last year? Uh, yes, unfortunately, that's that's highly unusual. Uh, usually, it only happens, you know, if there's some, um, you know, flaw in the research or or they suspect some misconduct. And uh, you know, I've never really heard it done before. All right. Well, Professor Robert Gary of Tulane University, we really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.